Hey everyone, uh, my name is Rob. I work in marketing for Jetpack, Automatic, uh, Akismet, WP Scan, lots of brands. Uh, I'm really excited to be back at WordCamp Atlanta. Uh, my first WordCamp was actually WordCamp Atlanta in 2019. I actually just started working at Automatic. It was my first week at Automatic and I wasn't even involved in WordPress before that. I learned about WordCamps, I looked it up, and there was one down the street. So I actually rode my bike downtown and went to the last one in 2019. So I was excited to uh, come back the next year. And well, you all know what happened. It's uh, <laughs> taken us four years to get back here, but here we are. So yeah, let's give it up for the organizers. Let's, uh, you persevered, got us back going again, and I'm excited for the future. And uh, thank you all for coming out and supporting us. So my talk today, like I said, is benefits, not features. How to speak human. Um, and why did I pick this talk? Well, on the surface, we all work for a company that sells a WordPress-related product or service, or a freelancer that works with WordPress. And we can all improve the way we talk about our products or our services so that uh, it better resonates with the people we're trying to reach. So I'll leave you today with some simple takeaways uh, that you can go back, put them into action, and uh, talk about your product in a better way. But I do have an ulterior motive for being here today. So I've worked in WordPress marketing for almost five years now, and I've seen a lot of uh, really great messaging that shows off the power of WordPress, our plugins, our agencies, and it's contributed to the growth of WordPress for 20 years. I've also seen some messaging that's a bit muddled, unclear, and I think it's confusing and intimidating to people, to new people trying to get into WordPress. Because there's a myth out there that's spread by some other people that WordPress is not for beginners. And I wanna help fix that. Uh, and all of us can help fix that because uh, we're not just selling our own product or service, we're selling WordPress as a whole. We're ambassadors for WordPress. And the more we do that well together, we take someone from a closed platform and bring them into WordPress, and that's what's gonna lead us to the next 20 years. All right, so I talk. People have problems. <laughs> uh, I see the art cracks me up on this slide. I recently got to go to a meetup in Malaga, Spain, and I went to the Picasso Museum and so I was putting together slides for this talk, and I was messing around with Midjourney, which is the AI image creator, and so I was putting some of my art in with classic Spanish painters. So this is Picasso. You might see some Dali or some Goya. That was fun. Um, all right, so people have problems. We do. The good news is that uh, they will pay you money to solve their problems for them, because we have so many problems, we can't solve them all ourselves. But you already knew that because that's why you started your business, your product, your service, whatever, because you found a problem people have and you have a skill to <laughs> solve their problem and take their money to solve their problem for them. Um, so you've already done the hard work. You just need to find a way to better connect with people to get them to, to give you money. All right, so there's a, a famous business saying you might have heard it's uh, people don't want a quarter inch drill. What they really want is a quarter inch hole. And what this means is that people aren't inherently interested in your product just because it exists. It's just a means to an end to solve their real problem. I know it's hard for us to hear because we're, like, we're in the weeds in a, with our product every day and it's all we can think about sometimes. But that's a product centric mindset. We gotta move to a customer centric mindset because that's where, like, that's really all people care about. They're thinking about themselves, they're not thinking about us. Uh, and that's the foundation of product marketing, is just thinking about the customer and what they want. So I've got a simple framework I'll show you that uh, is a messaging framework about how I like to think about talking about uh, our products. It's simple, see? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is one I put together for Kismet. I know this looks intimidating. Don't worry about reading it right now. Um, I'm gonna, in 15 minutes, you'll be able to make one of these, something like it for yourself that really helps you organize your thoughts. Um, so I just wanted to show it as a scare you a little bit, but it's not that bad. All right, 
Uh, so let's back up, talk about benefits and features. What's the difference? Features are what your product does. Here I have a fancy new iPhone, although I just realized today that uh, AI hasn't figured out that the new iPhones, they don't have buttons anymore. So uh, we could still be AI at something. Um, so we'll just pretend it's a new iPhone. It's got a fancy camera. What is, what is a camera? Well, it has 12 megapixel, 26 millimeter wide lens, 100% focus pixels, and auto image stabilization. Uh, what else has it got? Oh, yeah, f-stop 1.5 aperture. I just read all that off the website. Um, I don't really know what any of that means, uh, but it sounds impressive. I'm impressed. All that means, it, it takes pretty pictures. Okay, I like pretty pictures. That's good. Um, but why do pretty pictures matter? What's really behind that? Uh, we don't want pretty pictures just for themselves. Uh, all right, so let's imagine your kid is playing soccer, has a breakaway, scores a goal. They're running fast, but you're able to make a crystal clear image and play it back later, send it to friends and family. Uh, like the real benefit there is you're capturing the essence of being a parent. Well, that's pretty good. You're sharing a moment with loved ones. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty powerful. I like that. That to me is a lot more interesting than, than listing all the features. Um, and next one. So this is a, um, a benefit ladder. We start at the bottom and we want to climb to the top. The higher to the top we get, the better the connection you'll make. So we start here with the bottom with target and insights. Who is your customer? What do they care about? What's their problem? Hopefully you know some of that already. Uh, if not, you have to come back another time because that's a different talk. Uh, so we climb up the product features and that is the stuff we just talked about, the iPhone 12, me 12 megapixel, 26 millimeters. Then we get to functional benefits. Okay, that means the pretty pictures, sharing it easily. That's good stuff. That's uh, where most people live, sharing those functional benefits. But the top one, how does that make you feel when you have those pretty pictures and you share them? Proud, loving, nostalgic. That's powerful stuff. The higher you can climb, if you can get to this level, you're creating a connection with the customer, maybe a repeat customer, maybe a brand advocate. Someone is willing to talk about how awesome you are to other people. That's really great if you can get there. All right. One framework that I like that helps, it's just a really simple way to boil it down, is called the jobs to be done framework. What this says is that there's uh, the people, when they buy our product, they hire us. They hire our product to do a job. And if we do a good job, great, they'll hire us again. And if we do a crappy job, you're fired. Uh, so this boils it down into three lines. When I struggle, that is the customer's problem. Need the solution, that's your product, so that I can benefit. And that's the reminder of what the end benefit is there. So it's pretty easy to do. You could probably fill one out right now for your own, own product. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little tip that I like. Um, this is where talking like a human comes in. Uh, so it's not just any kind of human. You wanna talk like the humans that buy your product and even better, your best customers. Do you know who your best customers are? They're the people that spend the most money with you, that buy multiple times, that leave you reviews, that are an advocate to tell other people to use you too. That's really great. You wanna to talk to them and find out how they talk about your product. You might learn a lot, what they like the most, but they'll also help you explain how to talk about your product to other people. All right, I have an example here. Um, so for Akismet, uh, I did an exercise where I went through our five-star reviews and I pulled out any phrase that I thought was, was interesting to me or compelling and I just made a list of them. And here's a few examples. No learning curve. It just works. Never waste time. Every WordPress site needs this. No downsides. Set it and forget it. To me, this was really exciting because I could sit around thinking up messaging and copy all day, but these are people that really, they like the product enough where they left to review themselves without me asking, and they came up with these words. That's a lot more interesting to me to use words like that. Um, so using this, 
I came up and filled out this job to be done statement for a kismet. So when I need to eliminate spam comments on my site, that's the problem a lot of people have. I need a solution that just works. This speaks to the, uh, the accuracy, consistency. So I never waste time scanning comments again. That's, so the surface benefit here is save time. Everyone wants to save time. But the underlying benefit there is uh, people have, you know, you run a small business, you have so many things uh, asking for your time. You have so many different things to be, be doing. You don't have time for spam comments. You wanna do, you wanna grow your business. You wanna do anything else. That's really the underlying benefit there. Just take something off my plate so I don't have to think about it. Uh, and I mentioned you could also use this for copy. This is a enterprise page we have. You notice the top line, set it and forget it. Uh, I took that right from a customer review. That's, uh, it's great when someone can do my job for me, a customer, and hopefully I can find more customers that look like them. All right, so name of the talk was benefits, not features. Well, that was a bit of an exaggeration because features, they do matter too. Um, the key is first make that emotional connection. And then once you've got them hooked a little bit, then you can talk about the features. Um, especially if some of your customers may be looking at other solutions on the internet, like some of your competitors. Hmm, which one do I pick? Well, this is where it is important to list out all the features. Uh, I like to have a feature page that goes into great detail of all the things you have. It's important to be concise at the top, but people, if they see something on a competitor's page and not on yours, they might think you don't have it even if you do. So it's important to list out everything you do and if you're more detailed, it's important for SEO too. That'll give you a nice boost the more content you have. Um, oh, one other thing I like to do is not just list the features, but also link them back to the benefits. So instead of saying your camera is 12 megapixel, 26 millimeter, say create memories that last a lifetime with the camera that has 12 megapixel, 26, blah, 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 et cetera. It can, be, it can be helpful. All right, so going through that framework I showed you a quick peek at, we go through benefits, features. Next is called reasons to believe, and here I have AI Rod Stewart singing, uh, giving you a reason to believe. So reason to believe is, there's a lot of people on the internet, everyone's saying stuff. Uh, you have your benefits and your claims, that sounds great, but why should I believe you? How do I know you're not just some guy, some spammer making up stuff to take my money? Uh, and so this is how you, you can give more credibility to what you're saying. Um, so you think about it like in the Apple example, why do we believe Apple? Well, I mean, they've been creating innovative, delightful experiences for multiple decades. Like, of course we believe Apple. They can just say anything they want. And we're like, oh yeah, I want that Apple. Uh, unfortunately, we are not Apple. So we have to work a little harder to get them to believe us. Um, with Kismet, I try and talk about uh, the technology underlying and why, why it's impressive. It has 15 years of data. It, uh, it works on millions of websites, and it uses cloud-powered machine AI learning. I don't know. You have to think about what resonates if you were explaining to someone why, why your product and service is so good. How would you make them believe you? And that's the kind of language you want to use. Um, something simple you could do to get started that a lot of people do is a money-back guarantee. I don't know. It's, uh, it's reassuring. It's kind of like putting your money where your mouth is, saying, like, if you don't believe me, I'll give you your money back. You know, if you're just getting started and want more people to give you a try, it's something you could, uh, you could consider. All right, and the last one is your proof points. So you give people a reason to believe, but there's still the most stubborn, cynical people out there. And like, I wanna see numbers, I wanna see data. How are you gonna prove that you can, do, you can deliver on these claims you're making? And if you have real numbers, or you can come up with real numbers, that's best. Uh, if you don't have numbers, or it's like a service, an agency, and maybe numbers doesn't really make sense, uh, customer uh, case studies or success stories, that's really compelling. Like I said, find your best customer, tell their story, why were they so happy? 
And then you'll maybe put it up and other, someone that's on the fence reads that and say, well, I look like this person, so I think this solution will work for me. I'll give you some examples of what I've used. I pulled this off the Akismet website. Uh, like I said, we're lucky enough to have 15 years of numbers, 546,365,133,567. Then that actually updates on the website. Uh, that's, to me, that's pretty compelling. It's such a huge number. 100 plus million websites, 99.99% spam detection. Uh, so yeah, be loud about your, your numbers. That makes people feel reassured to use actual numbers. Or a case study. Here we work with ConvertKit. Uh, work with 428,000 creators to save them 20 hours a month. I know this has numbers too, um, but you could just tell the story about how they succeeded, and even if it doesn't have numbers, it'll be compelling. All right. That's all the stuff I just talked about in that, that framework, uh, the messaging framework. So now I'll walk through it a little slower. All right, so the benefits, think about, do that exercise, what are the main benefits why people use my product for a kismet? Save time, increase form conversion, improve site engagement. And then you have supporting features. So you'll notice these have some, some columns, they kind of line up to those top ones. The first two go all the way across. Um, I like to line up the feature with what the benefit it provides. So like I said, the first two are blocking spam because that's really the foundation of the product. But the third one, removing captchas. Oh, I hate captchas. Uh, they line up to increasing form conversion and improving site engagement. And why that's important is later when you're writing copy, you're writing an email or a web page about captchas or forms, this this handy chart will say like, these are the main benefits here. So this is really how you figure out, I'm talking about these features, here's what I want to connect to. The next part were those reasons to believe. You can talk about your, why spam damages your website performance and help people understand why how spam is so bad or why Kismet's so good because cloud powered, algorithmic, et cetera. You'll find your, yours over time. And Finally, proof points. Those are those hard numbers I gave you, uh, trusted by number of sites, spam comments blocked, etc. And the last one, the very top now, I uh, do it last because it's the primary message. So tying it all together, if you could just give one sentence to summarize what your product does, why it's so great, why it benefits people, uh, this is that one summary sentence. You can use it to then, this might be helpful for writing a headline on, your, on a web page. So there's the whole thing. Uh, this document, for me, is really important. It's a foundation of how I talk about a kismet. I share this with everybody at Automatic and say, like, this is why Automatic is good, why a kismet is good, um, especially if there's a sales team or other people that are talking about your product to make sure you're on the same page. And then you'll hear back from, I hear from sales like, well, actually, I've tried this one and that doesn't resonate with people. I have a different benefit and it's really helpful for me because this is an evergreen document. I've been updating this for like three or four years now. Uh, I replace a benefit all the time. It's more important. Put new features as they come out, new data points. Um, and then this is the first tool in my toolkit. Someone comes to me and we need a new web page. We need to send an email. Like, well, what are we talking about? Well. I have a benefit I want to talk about. The features are underneath it. Reason to believe, proof points. It basically writes itself at that point. I can turn something around in an hour because it's already been written. I'm just taking the, the guiding light here and turning it into copy. Well, that's it. That is product marketing 101. Um, it's really, like I said, about customer-centric thinking, understanding your customer, and keep asking questions till you get to that end benefit. Uh, so I encourage you to go all out and give it a try, and let's all take WordPress to the next level. Cool. That's it. Thanks. And have lots of time for questions if you have any. Sure. Yeah. 
Well, that's a good that's a good problem to have. Um, so yeah, so when we're creating content, you probably did some maybe did some like keyword research who you think you're gonna pull in, and uh, yeah, and then you find out that other people are visiting. Well, I guess if you had uh, if you had comments enabled, then you might understand from other people asking questions. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, well, if you're already doing, do you think they would have additional questions that would need answering? Um, yeah, I guess it's just trying to find out who, who they are. Um, and like, if there's a way to, if hopefully there's comments or some way to get in touch with them, then you can find out who they are, what they care about. Um, that's, uh, like, we actually did that with Akismet. We've, Akismet's always been a small, small business since WordPress found it as one of the first plugins and helping bloggers specifically keep the, the content there. And we're just going through our customer list and finding out who our best customer is. And I found out that Microsoft was using <laughs> Akismet. Like, why is Microsoft using Akismet? Don't you have some product? And, you know, even like Facebook, YouTube, Google, if, they, if people have figured out the spam problem, then <laughs> comments in YouTube wouldn't be such a disaster. Uh, so yeah, it was just asking questions, and then we found out, wow, there's like a whole enterprise level need for this product. So um, yeah, I don't know if I have anything specific other than try and ask, try and ask questions and what do they care about, and then you can find out maybe you have a new market or tailor your next content towards those people. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess I'm talking about something. We have a product that's kind of like at a platform level, and we're figuring out like different use cases. Yeah. And so I don't know if you know, you were figuring out. So when you're figuring out your persona, you know, if it's a bunch of them, and then which one do I pick? Which one do you use? Like your best customers, maybe it's something that looks like who's paying you the most or something. But if you're still kind of committed to but who Congress is maybe somewhere, I guess that's adjacent to what you do, but it's like there's yep. different avatars. So could you speak to how you potentially break down this process like when you have different avatars in this case? Yeah. Um, it's hard. And I would say that uh Automatic is not necessarily the best at deciding because we we try and be everything to everyone, which is really hard to do. Um, same with Jetpack. So I'd like to break it down that you were what you mentioned there about who is your best customer, it's more of a strategic thing first. Like, who do we really want to go after? I try and pitch this. If we lost every customer except one, could our business like grow with this one customer? And hopefully it's one with enough market opportunity that, that it could. And then rather than just spread myself thin trying to be everything to everyone, if you could be really great at this one type of customer. Um, so like you said, either your best customers look at that or if it's a really crowded Area. Everyone's everyone's working on this customer. No one's over here. Let me move over here. That might be a reason to do it. Um, so yeah, that's I try and look at. Um, I've been with with Jetpack. We had this problem, and uh, if any of you have been in the community a long time, Jetpack hasn't always had the strongest name at at WordCamps because it wasn't built for developers originally. I mean, it was, but. People that manage lots of site, they want a, a simple plugin that does one thing. They don't want all of this stuff in one big plugin. That's that's really re helpful for novices, but not developers. So that led uh, that product strategy of we're breaking up Jetpack. Now I'm we're talking to developers and trying to change those perceptions because it's a different product. So yeah, it's it's really about like being aligned strategically, getting everyone on point. Like who's the most important customer is, and then the use cases. It's easy from there. Uh, talk to talk to people. How do they use the product? What are their problems? List out the use for, and that's where customer stories come in. If you could have one strong one for every use case, that would be um, that would be really helpful. So for, um, so I got to go into reviews was really smart, like five star reviews, these are your best customers. Sometimes, like, I'm sure you guys work on like totally brand new products, um, where you're like, hey, here's a need, or I suspect this is a need. 
you have strategies for finding that like you know default perk like your uh, the marketing when you're launching something brand new and you have know, customers that don't do that? Yeah. Um, well, that's uh, what I like to do is um, the this thing you may have heard that Amazon does before I even. I mean, usually the developers are already in a way, and I have to jump in and be like, "Do you know what you're building yet? <laughs> let's let's talk about it." But I try and write the press release before or the blog announcement blog post before they even start writing, because imagine it goes like development goes awesome, super fast, and now we're ready to go shout about it. Like, what is your dream situation? And write the headline and like, "I solved this problem, and I can do this." Um, that's when you're starting out. It's the problem you're hoping to solve. So that's what I'm usually going for. And then if you're um, if you're able to do like customer interviews, customer interviews or beta testing, like that's when you can dig in more about a specific person and does this resonate with you? Like, did it solve your problem? Do you have a different problem? And then you'll like slowly get that. Um, but yeah, that's what I I try and do. But you know, and if not, you just figure it as you go. Like that when I came in. Um, we hadn't done a lot of that stuff, or maybe we had, but it hadn't been documented in the same way. So I was coming into a 10-year-old product and asked, like, why do people use it? And you know, she's like, well, to block spam. I'm like, okay, but like <laughs> beyond that. And um, yeah, so then we work on detailing out all the use cases. And you can it's evergreen, so you can improve it over time. You're always getting better. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out.